You have tuned into the Voice of Medicine, the medical podcast filled with remarkable stories, first-hand experience, important research, and valuable life lessons. Open your mind, relax, and enjoy. Hi, everybody. I hope you're all doing great. Today is a special podcast um, planned, especially for me, since today's podcast topic is going to be boxing and medicine. To be precise, I'm going to talk to Davide Bianchi, who is uh, an Italian doctor who is working now in Switzerland for a very long time. Uh, And uh, he definitely is somebody who can be described as a passionate person. Um, one of his favorite quotes is motivation and enthusiasm are the keys of success. He is a ringside physician and he is in the official association of ringside physicians. He's been a ringside doctor for quite a while. And this part of medical profession does not really, you know, get mentioned much. So, of course, I came up with, uh, you know, hundreds of questions uh, which I could ask him. And I brought it down to a few with might be interest as well for you as there for me. And let's see um, how Davide is going to answer them. Well, Davide, not everybody uh, thinks immediately about a doctor when uh, they watch boxing or any other uh, martial art match, be it MMA or, or kickboxing. Uh, but the crucial role of a ringside doctor, you know, cannot be neglected, right? Uh, you are even an official member of the Association um, of the Ringside Doctors, which is based in New Jersey in the U.S. Please explain our audience and myself, how does one become a ringside doctor? Yeah, this is a good and a complex question at the same time. Uh, first of all, to be uh, a ringside doctor, you need to have some experience in uh, emergency medicine, internal medicine, orthopedic medicine, and be a passionate of combat sports. Mm-hmm. Because medicine is one thing, and uh, sports medicine is another. Uh, we don't treat people in the hospital, we treat people at ringside. And uh, this is not the same thing, it's a little bit complicated. We must be fast, we must be attentive, we have to prevent uh, some uh, negative events and to act very, very fastly. Okay. So you said a lot there. So let us unpack it, you know, piece by piece. So the first thing which you mentioned is that um, you you have to have a certain speciality um, in the medicine. You mentioned internal medicine, um, emergency, and so on. And then you, you described that there is a difference in what your function actually is. There is the um, reactive part of that, of your job as a ringside doctor, and the preventive. Now, tell me about the reactive one. So uh, how, I mean, let's describe this to our audience. So you are, um, you know, you are standing there, there is the ring, there is a fight going on, uh, two people are fighting. Where do you stand? What do you watch for? And how do you know when is your time to step in and do something? Yeah, I always say we have to smell uh, the negative situation arriving. Okay. So we have some um, tricks. For example, sometimes when I see that the boxer is going not too good uh, during the match, I go between the rounds looking at his face. Mm-hmm. If he's present, if he look at me, if he's reactive, I can give you one, two more rounds. If I see kill, uh, he has a, a, a way, the aspect, like sleeping or confused. He doesn't understand what the trainer tell him. He doesn't uh, react as a normal people does. So this is the moment to stop and they're running to the hospital for a CT scan or other things. So, uh, and even if we notice uh, 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 behavioral changes uh, with the boxer, start changing technique of boxing. This is another sign of uh, danger. Mm-hmm. So we have some... After that, uh, you can find uh, every little tricks uh, in uh, sports medicine books, but the experience is capital. So, uh, for be, being back at the, uh, your question, I think that to be a good uh, uh, ring doctor, you need uh, 
to be at the side of a senior. You can give you opportunity to practice with him the first, second time for a little bit uh, of time. It can suggest you some lectures, some uh, scientific articles to progress little by little. But you definitely need to understand a little bit of, of the martial art itself, as you mentioned, right? So you, you yeah. because yeah. you described that you have to be attentive to what's going on inside the ring. So you have to know, okay, this is this might be a dangerous situation, or this is not going as the boxer pro probably planned it, right? Yeah, this is really important. But not only you have to know the rules mm -hmm. uh, mainly for the world title, European title, very important title with forty thousand people looking at you. So you can jump on the ring and say stop. This is not possible. So if you do that, <laughs> it's not very professional. But more, you will never be called for other uh, work. So. Uh, for the security of the boxer, of course, but also for uh, a sort of professionalism. You have to know very well the rules, when you can say stop, when you can't go uh, on the ring. So they are, they are not so many rules, but you must be up to date with the, the last uh, federation uh, uh, rules and reglements. Mm -hmm. So there is a fine line between your um, your mission there on the ringside to protect the health of uh, the fighters but um, this, there is a, the, the line is between this and the the rules or the what is expected of you um, from the basically from let's say the, um, the the people who organize it the fighters themselves so you cannot you just do whatever you want in terms of well I am the doctor so I'm going to call the shots now you're sort of on the spotlight right it's not possible because in in the little little matches, little titles, local mm -hmm. or even national, uh, uh, the doctor is not chosen by the federation. It's someone local. Mm -hmm. So if we organize a, a national match in Zurich, probably the doctor is uh, from Zurich, mm -hmm. and the doctor will come from uh, Lucerne or Bern can be disadvantage because the doctor can stop too early the match and that's not good for european of world titles the doctor come from uh, abroad i don't know from where but from abroad so in this case the title is important the doctor must be uh, not involved with the local organization and he can't stop the bout the judge the referee must call for the doctor and after the call of the of the referee you can choose if stop or not mm -hmm. so even there there is a certain procedure which you have to to obey to now um when you are when you're explaining this um i was asking myself it might seem paradoxical um in in all of martial arts um there is a high risk of of uh, any kind of injury especially brain injury because you're getting hit into the head quite a lot yeah. but of course there are also other possible injuries now um did maybe any of your colleagues or friends ever ask you well but you are a doctor and uh, you know your mission is to to care for the health but now you're helping two guys or two two women to beat the heck out of each other um, you know because of uh, winning a match so how do you deal with this paradox or did it ever came up is this something that uh, maybe people ask you uh, fortunately I, I have never heard things about that in my situation but sometimes I had about other ring doctors I will never accept a position like that uh, because uh, this, this is not good for boxing, for MMA. It's not uh, really a, a, sport, a sportsman uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. But it's sure, it's sure that in a great uh, competition, to get promotion with so many dollars, uh, they try every time to facilitate the situation with uh, some judges, uh, some uh, referees. So it's possible. But I have never had such experience mm -hmm. if somebody came up to you um you know after all the experience that you have as a ringside doctor and would tell you well davide i believe that um, any kind of martial arts be boxing mma and so it's it's violence and it should be forbidden we are not uh, involved in sports combat for violence 
but we are against violence. We are there to protect people and uh, try to prolong their career. So to take care about someone who is uh, wounded or who is not good. Because if I refuse to do the ring doctor for a match, the match will go again in any case. Mm -hmm. so if a doctor say no, he will find another who take care about boxing. So I think the vision is different. Uh, li life is full of violence, full of trauma, full of accident. If I say I don't want to, to deal about, it doesn't mean that we'll, we will never have boxing or accident or trauma again. So uh, the role of a sports doctor or a ringside doctor is to protect the athletes, the fighter in any case. And it's very good that you're there, and um, it's important that you know uh, doctors like you are actually taking this, uh, taking this function, and are there for the fighters. Now let's talk about the fighters a little, um, and specifically about the possible injuries or the injuries that they have. So, in your experience, or it would be maybe interesting for our audience to know what kind of injuries do you treat um, on spot. So, do you, for example, if somebody gets cut? Do you treat it immediately um, or do, do you sew it afterwards? Um, if you could tell us a little bit about that. Well, well, I can't treat uh, immediately mm -hmm. because I have no, I have not the right to, to treat a cut during the match. Mm -hmm. if the cut is not, uh, is really serious and I have to stop the bout. I have to stop the bout and then I can treat. But if the cut can be handled by the corner man, by the cut man, I don't have the right to, to touch. I must only control the depth of the, uh, the quantity of the bleeding, if there are some structure involved. And in this case, if the situation is uh, complicated, I must stop the match. Mm -hmm. If I can suture the, the wound uh, on, on in the place, so I have to go to send the, the boxer to the hospital for a surgical reparation or something like that. So I can't trade right now. In the very complex cases like a cardiac arrest, of course, I have to, to act uh, promptly, but they are fortunately very, very rare cases. Okay. Um, and what happens, for example, so just maybe we should clear this up for some people uh, who don't know, um, who is a cut man? Yeah, this is another good question. I'm fortunate because I can act uh, in two roles, but not two at the same time, of course. So the cut man is not a doctor. The cut man is someone who has a great competence of treating uh, bleedings, uh, cuts, uh, doing hand wraps, so uh, the cut man must give uh, the fighter a uh, uh, round more. So the, she, he doesn't have a therapeutic role. It only let the boxer continue. Uh, the cut man mustn't say we have to stop the match. We mustn't go on. The cut man just think about hand wraps, bandages before the match. Must apply Vaseline on the on the face and try to stop bleeding to let uh, the boxer having one more round when he is uh, wounded. So he's basically the repairman like in the pit stop uh, for Formula One. <laughs> he gets you ready for the job and then you can go on back back to the uh, back to the ring. Okay. And more the cut man can only use uh, adrenaline uh, and uh, Vaseline. You can't use arbitrary uh, in other sports. You can see everything, but the, the official rules by WBC, WBA, you can only use Vaseline, transparent Vaseline, mm -hmm. and address one to one thousand as the solution. Okay, okay, that's also interesting information. Um, so, in in your experience as a ringside doctor, what was the let's say the worst um, injury that you had to deal with um, with a fighter? Yeah, well, I, I would say plenty of uh, horrible cats, but the worst was uh, a young girl, a young, beautiful girl coming from the national team of Bosnia here in Switzerland, a long trip, 12 hours of car. She was very, very tired. And uh, at the end of the third round, she lost consciousness completely. And so we have some minutes of tension with television, camera, but at the end, everything was fine. Uh, we had really, we was really scared about the situation. I remember 
I had to work for for uh, make uh, the airways free. To uh, we were we were really really intentional, but everything will go go uh, well. Some sometimes in the in the when you deal with the team, they are professional, but not really really famous uh, athletes. Must. Uh, they are not followed by the great preparators, uh, but great technicians. So they are really dehydrated, de- uh, long trips with the car, and so they arrive on the ring not in the best conditions. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so ba- basically, already at the beginning of the fight, uh, they are in a disadvantage because uh, all the 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 time pre-fight was uh, was not good to their body. Let's say, as you said, dehydration. Yeah. Um, sitting in a sitting in a car for 12 hours, it's I mean that's that's not how you should come to a fight. It's for sure. Uh, the dehydration is a principal matter in a combat sport. It's because uh, of the weight cut, right? Not only. Okay. Not only. The problem is not only the cut weight. The problem um, that sometimes uh, the dietary program, the training program, is not proper mm-hmm. for athletes that they are professional. But at this side, they are still working in other domain. So how you can stand in face of 12 rounds, 10 rounds, when you work eight hours per day? That's really difficult. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Of course, for some professional and important match, uh, cut weight is a reality. Yeah. So many years. There are some specialists who can do uh, this in the correct way. There are some uh, physics that can tolerate well cut weight, but there are other physics and in, the, in other organization uh, where uh, money is very important. There are big money, big prizes, and so they cut 12 those kilos in 24 hours, and this is really, really, really dangerous because yeah, sure. it's not it's not possible. To uh, make up uh, from uh, dehydration, it only one, 24 hours. Yeah, for only liquid, it's impos- it's possible, but not for electrolytes. And uh, uh, modifying in an important way the electrolyte balance is really really dangerous. It can uh, lead to death, even to death with for for arrhythmias, uh, other other serious problems. I mean, uh, the um, you can uh, favorize the production of ambles, thrombus, and so on. Well, thank you for bringing this topic up. Uh, um, you know, it's it's not just the danger of the fight itself, but the fight preparation, the training yeah. regime. You know, if, if as you said, if it's done incorrectly or way too drastically, it can actually do harm before you even step into the ring. Yes, that's definitely the case. Um, going back to um, to possible injuries. Is, for example, um, you know, broken ribs and those kind of things, is that also common? Because, I mean, we were talking so far only about the head, you know, but there are body every shots time. as well. <laughs> yeah, every time, of course. So, yeah. what, so what happens, for example, if you if you see a really, you know, a rib-cracking body shot um, um, of, to a fighter? like? Yeah, they're quite frequent in boxing mm-hmm. and more in the Muay Thai or MMA. Uh, because you can uh, you can utilize also uh, your legs, mm-hmm. your knee, so the trauma impact is more violent. But all depends by the fact that the boxer can uh, defend himself. Even with a broken rib, you can see the boxer who, who are able to defend himself, so the match must go on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, a little sign of uh, uh, this balance... Uh, uh, passive defense or no defense, I always stop. All right. Okay. So that's that's definitely one of the signs. Um, what I wanted to ask you, and I forgot, is um, are you the only uh, doctor on site, or is there a colleague? So how, how or how many ringside doctors do you usually need? Do you need two for each fighter? One? No, no. It no? depends about titles. Okay. I know the European Boxing Union. You are obliged to have two doctors mm-hmm. uh, for national titles, or, um, at least in Switzerland. You don't need to have many doctors. If you are called for some uh, uh, world championship, WBC, WBA, and right now in the United States, uh, they are four or five doctors. But this is another situation with uh, big prizes, big money, great organization all over the world. 
so it's not the same things. But for normal, normal national title, a little generic activity, one, one ring daughter is enough. Getting more on, you know, into into uh, your your life, is it a necessary requirement for a ringside doctor to also? Um, well, we already spoke that you need to understand the fighting and you need to have an idea about what's going on. So that's one thing. But um, is it helpful or is it needed that you, for example, fought yourself? And that would get me to my second question. Are you actually a fighter or did you used to fight before? Yeah, yeah. I was a fighter so many years ago. Right now I have no time. I go to the gym. Uh, it depends. Two times a week, three times. So uh, I know well the boxing. But when I started uh, working as a ring doctor, I didn't know so much about Muay Thai, about MMA. Mm -hmm. So I, I, in any case, you have to learn every time or lifelong. So I come from boxing. Of course, I have so many colleagues then they have never practiced boxing. So it's important, it can help, but we have so many excellent colleagues who never boxed, but they are really competent. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Out of interest, uh, since uh, you're, so you're a f former boxer and, and you're into boxing, who's your favorite fighter right now? Uh, my favorite, right now, uh, in activity. Yes. In activity, Tyson Fury. Okay, and why is that? Uh, because he's the most talentful uh, champion in the heavyweight boxes, my old categories. Mm -hmm. He's a, a special character, polyethnic, a little bit weird. Uh, he makes a great boxing, even if he, he's tall, uh, two meters uh, with one other 20 kilos. Fantastic. I don't remember another heavyweight boxer of his stance can uh, move like him. Looking at the personality side now, a little bit of a ringside doctor. So, um, what do you think? Is there anything special about the, I don't know, character or temperament um, that of a ringside course. doctor should have? Of course, we must be ready to war. We must be ready to be booed, insulted, menaced. This is normal. So it's so, a little uh, bit like in football when you're the referee, right? <laughs> yeah, right now. Even, even worse. Even worse because boxing is a, is a bloody sport, not only in the practice, but even uh, in the heart. So the people, uh, the crowd... Um, is um, always right. You must go against the crowd for uh, for them. And so, if you get an unpopular decision, they will uh, boo at you, they will yell at you, and so on. Uh, did you actually ha had to get physical um, any time in your career because of this? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no nobody came up with the idea to start attacking no, no. you, yeah? No, no, no. Because you know, sometimes it um, usually it's just uh, just because the, the 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 boxers or the the fighters are so into their thing that uh, sometimes even when the referee gets in between, they forget themselves and he gets sometimes you know punched, knocked out or whatnot. So this doesn't yeah. happen to you guys, yeah? No, no, fortunately not till uh, today. But I know uh, there are some examples in the history of boxing. Uh, you can find them on uh, on a YouTube. Uh, and sometimes the match uh, ends with a big rumble, uh, everybody against uh, each other, and so on. But uh, not not with me. David, the last question: If anybody was interested to, um, you know, get into your world of ringside uh, um, uh, ringside medicine, um, how would one start? So where would where would you say if a colleague was interested, where he should ask, talk to? How does he get into this? I think. Uh, like we say, to be uh, one, ask one. So to get in contact with other ring doctors and ask to be a, a junior doctor, to follow the senior one in some uh, uh, little local events uh, and uh, growing little by little. Then when you have a, a good number of match, uh, I think for the um, association of, of the ringside physician, you need to attend 15 professional bouts mm -hmm. to ask for an inscription. And then you can go to the United States and uh, pass the certification exam. Uh, uh, this exam is not uh, really uh, difficult, but it's not really easy. So you have, you have to attend a good experience. You have to know uh, so many things. So the experience in this sector is important. This is the first uh, suggestion I can give you to someone who wants to start in this uh, world. 
Wonderful, perfect. Well, I make sure to put your uh, contact down below uh, of the of the podcast. So if people are interested, they can maybe you know uh, talk to you about this, and maybe you can refer them to somebody who is a uh, bit closer geographically if they want to get into this. Perfect, Davide. Thank you very much for taking your precious time um, talking to me. You know, sharing your your story with with our audience. It was really a pleasure, and thank you very much for doing what you're doing. Welcome. Thank you for the interest in this sector. This was the voice of medicine. Make sure you tune in next time and take care.